Hi, I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Parr, and you're watching Videos by Andy. Hey, you probably already know this guy here. See this badge? Kerry Garrison from Castle Rock, Colorado. You might have also heard of his company, Multicopter Warehouse, where we're sitting here, and there's people walking around us. Why? Because we're at the Consumer Electronics Show, and in just a moment, we're going to hear what products he's finding to be the hottest of the hot, and that starts now, so stay tuned. Okay, as stated, I'm here at CES. Now, for those of you who might not be in the know, CES stands for the Consumer Electronics Show. This is where manufacturers from around the world assemble to show their latest and greatest products. Not products that are available today, but products that will be available for the next holiday season. Now, this attracts dealers such as this guy right here. This is Kerry Garrison. Kerry operates Multicopter Warehouse. Kerry's done a great job. Of, of really being kind of the class act of copter dealers and the one thing that I've noticed it's different than you and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here that you seem to be one of the few dealers who not only has a copter and technical background but you have a pretty strong photo background can you tell us a bit about that yeah I was a professional photographer for about 15 years and also an RC enthusiast that whole time and I always wanted to meld the two but it, the technology was just wasn't there and when it finally started to come around it was way too expensive for the average person so now all of a sudden in the last couple of years have you seen coming to the show one copter company four ten twenty copter companies now and now that ability to put a camera in the air for that different perspective is available to just about anybody you've been walking these aisles for a few days i just got here today you you You've already had the opportunity to put, you know, to go through, let's say, a couple pairs of shoes here. What do you see that are in the copter and camera world? What's hot here? Well, there's a ton of products here, and to be frank, a lot of them are pretty bad. Uh, there's, uh, I mean, you've seen this. Some of them, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even touch with a 10-foot pole. There's a few products out here that have really stood out to me. Now, we're a big DJI dealer. We're a big unique dealer. We carry the blade and some of the other products. The two big products to me that have really stood out from DJI are going to be the Osmo adapter for the X5 camera. So now we can put a micro four thirds camera on that, that handheld gimbal and really get some phenomenal ground footage. Unique introduced their H this week, and that's a small size hexacopter, 4K video camera, some amazing features in it and they partnered with Intel with their RealSense technology for object avoidance that is literally mind-blowing. And for the people who have always wanted that follow me feature, to see a copter follow somebody through the woods and not hit trees, it just blew my mind. You know, as you know, I did a segment earlier with, with uh, Sean Phillips, the CEO of Unique. And what blows me away about him, and let me tell you, yeah, he's a dealer. He makes money selling copters. I don't. I don't accept any advertising from anybody. But my opinion is, 12 months ago, they pretty much were a single copter company. Now they have a full line of products, and they have a good basis to expand. It's phenomenal what they've done. In this age, wherever you go here, I mean, it's in all the blogs are carrying it. The big guys are now getting unique. You know, we understand that the past three years, it's been all DJI whether it's in the press or on the blogs or whatever. And there's been a few of us who started following Unique early on. How is, what's your prediction, what's gonna happen based on what you've seen at the show? Well, as you've seen and you just kind of mentioned, DJI has been the market leader for a long time because they've had that experience. They were able to build up to the point of making the Phantom series and now the Inspire series, and those are phenomenal aircraft. With Unique, their first copter, the Q500, was the best first generation copter from a company than most people's second or third generation. And so to go from there in a span of a year to what we're seeing with the Tornado H920 and the, the new uh, Typhoon H, it's really incredible how fast that's grown. But we also have to look at t Unique as they're not a startup company. They've been around for a long time doing full size electric aircraft. So they already know how to build the motors. They know flight controllers. So now to scale that down into the consumer product, I think that gave them a huge leap forward. 
And on top of that, getting that investment and technology from Intel, that's really going to push them ahead of the game very, very quickly. So I think uh, the other companies that are out there that have been around for a while, they may be scrambling to try and figure out what to do next. You know, back in the day when I would work the CES as from the manufacturers, again, Texas Instruments, Panasonic, Sanyo Unit, and before I went to the media side, CES to us was an order writing show. We would show our new products, and of course, in the background, we'd show the next generation privately. You know, we didn't have to go NDA to our dealers, but to, to press and other people. But this is what we would try to get our dealers, our medium-sized dealers, to write the orders. Of course, the large dealers, we'd be on a plane to go see them as soon as the show's over. Is CES still an order writing show for dealers? You know, it's not so much of an order writing show anymore as much as it is being able to see in person the products that we may want or not want to carry. And a, a great example is right behind us here with ProDrone. And until you see something fly, until you can hold it and feel what that quality is like, it's really hard to make a judgment call based on marketing literature. I mean, we know marketing can be really good and can really blow people away. And as you know, so can photography. Exactly. Now, ProDrone, I mean, they're a great example of that kind of almost there. The copter's fantastic, the camera's not there. And so it's not going to compete in that same market until they improve that camera. And so things like that where we're seeing someone really nailed the camera but the copter isn't very good or they've nailed the copter but the camera's not very good, those companies need to go through a few iterations to get to that next level. Okay, let's say you see a pro drum. And, and for those who might not be in the know, this is a copter that folds down into the size of a book. You can put it in a briefcase, it then goes back out. But as you said, and I trust your judgment, because you have a lot of experience in, in photography, but you say the camera's not there. Because people are still probably going to abide for the coolness factor, would you stock a product like that? I Eventually, I think we will. Today, I, I don't think I would, because when they compare the video quality and they see that that camera's got a 104 degree lens and it's going to provide that real fisheye look like a GoPro, they're not going to be very happy with that. So until they improve that, narrow that down, get rid of that fisheye, the, the average person that's coming into our store is just going to go, eh, neat idea, not quite there. So as soon as they start getting to the next level, and we saw this with Unique as well, the original Q500, their 1080p, had really bad fisheye, had some color issues. The first version of the 4K, the camera needed some firmware updates. As soon as it got to that point where we said, that's going to provide the right customer experience, now we're ready to bring it into the store and sell it to our customers. You know, back in the old days, and if I'm understanding correctly, you have both bricks and mortar and online, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, well back in the day when it was only bricks and mortar, when a buyer would go through, and again, I'm trying to keep my questions here about the trade because this is a trade show. When a buyer would come through, they only had, they had a limited open to buy, which was the financials of what they could spend. And they had a limited amount of, sh of shelf and warehouse space. Well, that's changed now. Now, you can have, you know, in, in today's stores, or more show, one product or something, and the rest can be online. You can have a dozen products online. But you don't seem to do that. You seem to only focus and are a little bit more selective. Now, I've noticed some dealers seem to just carry endless supply and everything inside. How, I, now, here's the question. It took me a while to get there. How do you select which products that you're going to carry in your store or on? We fly them. What? <laughs> that's a novel kind. Yeah. You don't think that's universal? No, no. I, I, and I can tell because of what I see some of our competitors out there selling. And they're products that I might consider dangerous at some level. That they're horrible flyers. They're unreliable. But they'll stock a thousand different products simply so that they're covering the whole market spectrum. Someone's looking for product X, well they have it, they're gonna sell it. I won't sell it unless it's up to our quality of standards and that we know it's not gonna cause customer problems, we're not gonna get returns. It's going to be reliable and it's gonna provide the experience that is up to our quality standards. Okay. Now here when you're looking at copters, you're, you're looking at cameras, also batteries. You know, and again, I, it's just me, and I've asked this question before, when it comes to LiPo batteries, let me ask you from a deal. First, advice, and maybe if you found some products that cure this, whether it's unique, and DJI, they've had some issues this year with batteries and not charging properly. 
What's it going to take to, to get a product that's going to give the user or the consumer a reliable and safe way of charging and discharging batteries? That's not going to cost an arm and a leg. Yeah, well, there's the, the rub right there, right? And we evaluate batteries all the time. Companies are always sending us batteries to try out. And in our experience so far, there's only been two or three brands that we're even considering stocking. And it got to the point that they're, they're so inconsistent for the most part that we actually went to a manufacturer and said, here's what we need. We tested them, and now we're going to put batteries out under our own brand so that we can maintain that consistency. Otherwise, it's really not even worth it because if someone's got a problem with a battery, it can be catastrophic. As you, if you've seen some of the LiPo battery flyer, uh, fires that have occurred out there, the accidents that people have, if we don't maintain a consistent level of quality, we could run into some really big problems. So we had to actually take it to the next level and actually go into manufacturing. On the charging side, boy, that's all hit or miss too. If you don't go with a good brand of charger, I've seen overheating problems, I've seen fire problems. Uh, they're, again, stick to the name brands on those things. High tech is one of our favorites. There's a few others out there that we can really, really rely on. And I guess one last thing, and again, there's been so many segments on it. I produce one myself at the Typhoon Age. Do you think this is a a, a true game changer for Unique and DJI in this world is there, uh, now granted it's, it's going to be an $1,800 price point. Do you think this thing's going to be as big as what the buzz is? You know, there's, the, the standard copter design is prevalent. Everywhere we look, we see the quadcopter design. Going to a hexacopter allows for redundancy. If a motor fails, a prop fails, it can still land safely. If you're doing any type of commercial work where you're flying around people, having that extra level of you know, security blanket I think is huge, especially in something that's going to be sub $2,000. The 4K camera, they announced the, the FLIR add-on for it, the telemetry data, the ST16 controller. Is it a true game changer? I, I really dislike that word. But has it leapfrogged some of the competition in a lot of ways? Absolutely. Now, granted, I know you have a lot of money tied up in DJI inventory as, as well as other products. Were you kind of, I don't say disappointed, but you know, they came out with a new color for the Inspire. They did come out with the camera for the Osmo, as you were talking about. The Phantom, I don't even know what they did. Something, a less, a, a lesser, no, mom. What, I mean, evidently something else is coming. What do you think? Well. What we've seen over the past few years is at the NAB show, DJI announces a new Phantom. You know, a lot of people were expecting it to happen here. Well, that they've never done that. They don't announce at shows like this. So it's, it's kind of hard to say what they're going to do. What would a Phantom 4 look like? Anybody's guess. Do you but, think a Phantom 4 would replace the Phantom 3 or make the Phantom 3 a $400 cup? Well, if you've seen with the Phantom 3 standard, they just dropped the price on that to $499. You can't touch that price point with anything even halfway decent. Well, you know, with, with the price drops coming, and granted, after the holidays, so typically it's a price drop. Typically, if there's a price drop just prior to CES, that means clear out because we got a new model coming in the next nine years. But we're not seeing. Not that we know of. We've had no announcement from DJI. They're you know, not to bag on them, they're pretty bad at maintaining secrecy around their products. Leaks get out. And so last year, we started seeing stuff right about this time, little pieces and snippets and uh, camera photo or something, that we started to think there's going to be a new copter coming out probably around that NAB time frame, which is yeah, that March, April uh, time frame. We've seen nothing. So it's hard to say, and they keep revamping this Phantom 3 series. Now there's four different models, the standard, the Phantom 3 4K, the advanced, the professional. Maybe they're gonna just kind of keep melding that product line. Maybe they'll replace it with maybe a hexacopter, who knows? You know, it's funny, and I guess the big picture that we can take away from this show that you go back 12 months ago today, is that a rising tide raises all ships that the competition, the consumer wins, the dealer wins, more people are coming here, you're selling more quantity. There's more happy customers out there because we have a selection and we have 
competitors. When it's just one dominant company out there, for example, when DJI was the only one out there, they ran at their own pace. Now there's competition between the brands. We went on that one. You think that, yeah. that's a pretty fair set? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, competition breeds innovation. When the market is stagnant and there's no competition, why innovate, right? The only reason to is to replace your product line and get people to rebuy, right? Well, now that there's competition, we're going to see maybe price wars, feature wars. The sky's the limit right now, literally, around here. So it's going to be very interesting to see how these different companies, especially the big players, really start going head to head in the market with uh, the feature set. And uh, I can't wait to see what happens. Kerry, I want to thank you very much for your time. I know that you've had a really busy show. Uh, your dogs are probably barking from walking around so much. But anyway, thank you for taking the time to go through this. Absolutely, Andy, anytime. Have a great show, have a great trip home. For videos by Andy.com, I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Parn. I'll see you online and maybe fly one of these new copters at some point. <laughs>